you don't even realize you've fallen off a cliff and that that thing that you pray so significantly is about to destroy you. Are you here with me? There are very few safe, precious things. But the one thing you can rely on and know it's precious is the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said, verse number seven, to you who believe he's a jewel, he is precious. Are y'all with me here? He is something to hold on to. He's something to believe in. He's the one that gives you the power. You don't get the power by joining church. You don't get the power by how you worship. You've got to come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Watch this. Come on, it gets better. He said he's a jewel to those who believe. But look what he also says. He says, but to those who are disobedient, he's a stone which the builders rejected and have become the chief cornerstone. Do y'all see that there? In other words, for some who believe, he's a jewel. But to those who are disobedient, he becomes judgment. I wish I had somebody. In other words, if you don't follow Christ like you should, then what you're going to find out is, is that you're going to miss out on the blessings that Christ has for your life. There's a mindset that many of us are following. And and that mindset is simply this, that in reality, we are good people. We're good people, but we've lost our way. And with proper instruction and motivation, somebody can become better. We don't need a savior, we need a life coach. We don't need a redeemer. We need Dr. Phil. I wish I had somebody. I need somebody to talk to me and coach me up and counsel me because within me, in reality, I'm a good person. And there's some good things about me, but I've lost my way. That is a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible says that there's no good thing in me. I was dead in trespasses and sins. I was dead, defiled, deluded, demonic, diminished. Come on, I can think of another D. I was doomed. I wish I had somebody. But if it had not been for the blood of Jesus, I hope y'all are catching this this morning. I only want to talk about Jesus. I don't want to talk about how you feel. I don't want to talk about what you're going through. I want to talk about somebody that can get you out of what you're into. If it had not been for Jesus, none of us would be here today. None of us would be where we are in society if it had not been for the Lord. So understand there's nothing good in us. There's no good in us. We are nothing but filthy rags. Are y'all with me here? Now, now, come on, watch this, because I told you it's subtle. There are a lot of things that distract us from Jesus, even some things that are good. See, see, we, it's not the pot. Amen, that was a Gen X term. It's not the, the, the weed. That's a Gen Y term. It ain't the chronic. I wish I had somebody. See, that's not what is keeping us down. It's not the alcohol that's keeping us down. It's the subtle stuff that's messing us up. And it's the things that we deem as okay and good that are causing us to stray off path. See, come on, let me help you out. Satan will throw a spiritual fad at us to get conversation from us, conversation about our needs or our desires or our feelings, anything that will energize us and get us to talk about practical things. Come on here, somebody. We philosophize and make logic out of stuff 
and talk about the reality of it all and we keep Jesus out of the conversation. I stopped by to tell you that Jesus, listen, is not always going to make you feel good. Sometimes you're going to walk out of here with your feet hurting because he done stepped all on your feelings. Do I have a witness up in here? Sometimes it's not always about love. I'll get to that in a minute. Because Jesus said, I came to bring division. I came to separate folks. I'm looking for folks that will stand up and serve me and not serve the world. So you can't always be unified with folks that don't want to follow Jesus. Are you with me here? So, so we talk about these spiritual fads, which I'll talk about in weeks to come, that we have gotten caught up in. But understand that Jesus is the one we ought to focus on. Come on, watch what he says here. I'm closing. Look what he says here. He says, first of all, to whom he is precious, he is a jewel. But to those who are disobedient, he is judgment. Look what he says in the rest of the verse, verse number uh, uh, eight. He is the stone which the builders rejected become the chief cornerstone. Here it is. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Can I stop right there? See, when you begin to talk about Jesus, you offend people. Now, what do you mean, pastor? They'll allow you to talk about God all day long. Oh, yeah, they will. You can tell, oh, God is good. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah, we, we come up with these fads. God is good. Amen. All the time and all the time, God is good. Yeah, don't that sound good? You know, God is this. They'll let you talk about God all the time. But see, that's not the one that's the offense. The one that's the offense is Jesus. And as soon as you introduce Christ into the conversation, it seems that folks now got somewhere to go. Uh, it was good talking to you, but I, I'm late now. All of, a, all of a sudden, the conversation changes. Are y'all with me here? Why? Because he's a rock of offense. Can I talk about it? The, the, the word offense in the Greek is the word scandalon. And the word scandalon is literally used as a trap. Think about somebody trying to capture a rabbit who puts a box with a stick with a string on it. And when the rabbit comes to eat the carrot in the box, they pull the stick, the box comes down on the, the, the rabbit and they capture the rabbit. Are y'all with me here? That's a scandalon. It's a trap. Are you here with me? And so what he says in reality is Jesus is an offense. He's a trap or a snare, meaning what? That when you talk about Jesus, you are literally trying to capture the sinner from being a sinner to being a saint. But just like the rabbit, sometimes the rabbit won't just go for the carrot. He dances around the box, sniffing. Because he understands that he could get caught up if he goes right in. Y'all, I'm losing some of y'all. See, Jesus is an offense. He's a scandal line, meaning what? That when you start talking about him, all of a sudden the box goes up, the stick goes up, and you're just waiting for that sinner to go into the box. He becomes a snare or an offense. But watch this. Not only does it talk about him being that snare or that trap, but the word scandalon is where we also get the word scandal. Are y'all with me here? Meaning what? That when Christ was walking the earth, they scandalized his name. What you mean, Pastor? They scandalized his name. In other words, they talked about him. And everything he did, they made light of. Everything he tried to do which was good, they made it into something bad or evil. They scandalized his name. Are y'all with me here? Watch this. He said he's a rock of offense. Meaning what? That if you are talking about Jesus, if you are standing for Jesus, guess what they're going to do to you? Scandalize your name. 
you're going to become an offense. Now, here's the flip side. I'm closing. Watch this. Here's the flip side. If they're not scandalizing your name, that means they're comfortable with you. You blend in. You one of the boys. You one of the girls. You ain't causing no fences. I wish I had somebody. They don't feel threatened by you. Are y'all with me here? So because you don't offend anybody, then they are glad to be around you. So the question this morning is, who have you offended lately? Who have you talked about about Jesus? Who have you stood with and stood on the word of God? Who have you told, hey, look, I ain't drinking because I'm serving God? In other words, watch this. You become offensive when you got to tell people that you don't do certain stuff. So you don't tell them, I wish I had somebody. You'd rather blend in and get a Remy Martin with them. You'd rather get a Ciroc with them. You'd rather drink a little something, something with them. A little happy hour. I told you this before. There ain't nothing called happy hours. Why would you pay to get happy for an hour? when you can be joyful for the rest of your life. Come on here, I feel like closing this thing. He says, are you offending anybody lately? Does anybody know that you are a follower of Jesus other than you? Are you a secret service Christian? Are you a Christian on the down low? Are you a saint incognito? I wish I had somebody. Does anybody know other than you that you follow Jesus? Because one thing I've discovered is that if I am a follower of Jesus, I don't look like the world. Not only don't I look like the world, I don't act like the world. And not only don't I act like the world, I don't do the things that the world is doing. Are you with me here? So who have you offended lately? Look what the text says. It says he's a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which also they were appointed. What does that mean? That means simply this, that they're not going to get to heaven tripping over Jesus. They want to get to heaven. Watch this. They want to talk about heaven, but they want to get there absent of Christ. Christ. 